Hi guys, and welcome back to Star Control 2, and we are almost ready to take on the Urquan. However, we have one final obstacle blocking our path. Yep, it's the Dinyari. And, as you notice, we have the Taelo shield now, so the Dinyari theoretically should not be able to mind control us. Of course, he's going to have something else up his sleeve. I mean, this is Star Control, he's obviously going to have something else. But, let's head to the Beta Orionis system and see what he's got up his sleeve. Well, it would look like nothing at the moment. Well, this is a bit too easy. Yeah, let's see what he's got going for him. Huh? Why aren't you dead? Oh, what a bummer. I will remedy this situation. Find someone who will kill you. I cannot compel you. Your mind is closed to me. How can this be? I am forced to resort to more primitive measures. Oongar Commander, summon your ten combat chicks and attack this intruder instantly. Yeah, that would be the something else. Now, I could use my flagship here, but again, I'm going to use the Chimur for a bit. And the Ungar are stupid enough to go straight into their own planet. Now, the Ungar have quite a cool gimmick. They Their ships have an antimatter spray that intercepts any matter in front of them, so a weapon won't pass through it. And uh, they have this cool little warp jump feature that you're seeing all over the place. But they have almost no crew. So, whoa, gravity well. So, yeah, the uh, Chimur can just burn them. But since the Chimur ship's fairly big, it has to watch out for the gravity well. But, I mean, come on, Dinyari, this is the best that you can do. I've just beaten the hell out of the Druge. I'm fighting the Urquan all over the place, and you send Umgar after me. Again, I'm trying the tractor beam trick and trying to get it to... Uh, trying to ram it into the planet, but that didn't really work, but fortunately the Zapstats are more than capable of taking out the Umgar, and that's one of the best things about the Chimera Avatar against the Umgar, is that you don't even need the laser against them, and it might even be blocked by the antimatter spray, but there's no way that the Umgar drone can block all of the <laughs> Zapstat shot, and that was not... That was me getting a little bit overzealous with the tractor beam, and that drone would have just kept going if it hadn't have used its warp jump to actually slow itself down. It would have hit the planet at a hell of a rate of knots if it had done, and he's off again. Yeah, this battle's pretty one-sided, but I have lost one of the zap stats now, and the Chimur become decidedly worse when they're... Zap stats go down and when they start running into planets like I'm doing. I have to allow my laser a lot more. Oh dear, that's quite embarrassing. I'm not using the Utwig for this fight because I'm not sure they're particularly great against the Umgar. But we'll be seeing enough of them very shortly. Whoa, planets! Love how it has to use its warp jump to stop. But yeah, if it ever gets hit by that laser, it's all over. And I believe this is the last one. <laughs> it did a lot of damage before dying, but uh, 10 to 1, I believe, is the ship count. Now then, Mr. Dinyari, I believe you were saying something about trying to kill me. Give me a good reason why I shouldn't stomp you flat. Uh, hi there, friendly Sergeant Captain. You'll never believe this, but somehow... The injuries I suffered when the Urquan crashed triggered some kind of a personality transformation. I became evil and spiteful, cruel and nasty, whimsically unpleasant. You may have also noticed I gained some kind of temporary psychic powers. Well, I just want to let you know I'm cured. Captain, I don't know exactly how, but when you were fighting those Umga ships, a chunk of the semen fell down on my head and gave me quite a whack. Ouch, ouch, it still hurts. When I awoke, the universe had ceased to be the dark and hostile place I had previously thought it to be. Instead, I was overwhelmed, yes, even awed, by the beauty and perfection of it all. I also discovered that I had completely lost those wicked mental powers, and could now look forward to a new life 
filled with happiness, butterflies, and goodwill for all. Your job is done, Captain. You have saved me. Now you can safely remove your safety protection device and leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eddie. Why are you looking at me like that, Captain? Don't you believe me? You question my word? Okay, okay, so I was lying. Big deal. So what? Boy, are you a pain. Do you know that? What do you want from me? My life? Oh, you do? Hmm. Well, as an alternative, let me make this little suggestion. If you don't kill me, I'll help you do whatever you wish. <laughs> Is it a deal, Captain? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, I get the basic idea. You want to overthrow the Earth one. Bravo! Good idea! Way to go! <laughs> I too wish to see the Erkorn beaten, humiliated, destroyed, and I alone possess a unique ability that will help you achieve your goal. I can use my psychic powers to temporarily distract the Erkorn, confuse him for a few seconds. Presumably, you will use this moment to strike a lethal blow against the Erkorn. Such a plan cannot fail, Captain. We must see to that. I will gladly tell you my story, Captain. Gladly. I was indeed a talking pet aboard an Urquhorn Dreadnought. Those years are like a forgotten dream to me. Because I wasn't sentient. I was a dumb beast. An unthinking slave to the heinous Urquhorn. Then, there was a great battle. The ship was hit, severely damaged. Slaves running down the corridors. Commands, countercommands. Then there was a scream atmosphere outside the hull. There was a big explosion of light thunder. We hit the surface of a planet, I'm pretty sure. The next thing I can remember was the face of the creature you called the Arilu. I was in great pain. But the creature was kind. It did what it could for me by applying its own medicines in an alien form. I was transported off planet. And I remember it all pervading green light. Then we were the home world of the Arilu. Again, Captain. Forgive me if I'm not more clear, but I wasn't intelligent yet. Give me a chance. I presume my injuries were too severe for the Arlu to repair. Or perhaps I reacted badly to their medicine or something. Because the next thing I remember was being moved back into a ship. Things grow dim. My nice memory is being on board an Oomgah starship. Wet flesh throbbing all around me. Oomgah laughing as they worked on my body. It was kind of unnerving. Suddenly, like the explosion of a bomb, thought, I mean, real thought, flooded my brain. And I don't know how or why, but the Oonga had discovered that my brain could be easily changed, improved, gave me true intelligence. What they didn't realize is it also brought back a flood of memories. Memories of my species' ancient past, from before the time the Urquan castrated our thinking minds and transformed my people into crude beasts. I'm the only intelligent Denari left in this galaxy, Captain. Now you understand my lust for vengeance? It's all true, Captain. Every word. Now listen, and I should tell you why the Earth One did this to us. It was over 20,000 of your years ago, Captain, when an Earth One slave raider landed on the surface of my world and began capturing my people, killing those that would not submit. How can I know this, you ask? These memories are embedded deep in my genetic structure. They cannot be forgotten. How we fought the Urquan. Even then, they had a hierarchy of combat thralls, though then they called themselves by the absurd name, the Sentient Mil Yu. Ha! They were nothing more than thugs, especially those hideous Taelo. Those evil rock-like creatures were the worst of all. For fun, they take one of our children and then roll over it again. And again, oh, the war against the Urquan and their milieu lasted decades. Millions of our people died. But with the forces of truth and justice at our side, we were prevailing. Then, the Te'elo made their fateful discovery. A shield against our only weapon, our weak psychic powers. With that shield, they were unstoppable. We had lost. But the Urquan... They were not satisfied merely with our defeat, our slavery. They wanted more. They wanted to punish us for our insolence in fighting back against them. So they devised the sickest, most cruel and perverse punishment ever imagined. They made our very genetic structure, packed out enough of our minds to lobotomize us for all eternity. And then we were made their closest servants, their talking pets. This was our punishment. 
I believe my BS alarm is going off quite highly here, but we might need him, but I'm still going to quiz him for a bit. Captain, Captain, calm down, be reasonable, listen to me. I am nothing more than a single being, hardly larger than one of your earth dogs. Woo -woo. My only weapon, my weak psychic abilities, have been nullified by your protective device. I am harmless, but perhaps I can be of some small service to you. Consider this my hopeful attempt to compensate you for all the trouble I've caused you in the past. In the past, Captain, and now we look to the future. To victory over the evil Urquan, I am your secret weapon against these tyrants, Captain. Don't leave me here. Yes, Captain, I am a lying, boneless, toady weed. But I am your lying, boneless, toady weed. No tricks, Captain. <laughs> no tricks. I fear you cruelly misjudge me. I'm on your side now. Together, we will make a great team, Captain. This day, this moment, shall go down forever in the history of our galaxy. I am coming aboard your ship now. I will make a nest in the pressurized section of your ship's hold. When you wish to talk with me, I will be there. I feel like I've just made a deal with the devil himself, but if we're going to beat the Urquan, it's the only way. I'll see you next time, guys.